are these people? Um, I just figured you'd want to look at this guy's face. Oh, so, God. But, you know. Ah! Uh, um, Writing. Isn't it, though? It very I, lo- much I, love, I love the Hebrew, I love the Hebrew English font. It's, it, <laughs> it, it is very classy. You, you know what that's called? It's literally called Hebrish. <laughs> I just find it funny. It just makes me um, hate it more. I know, I know. Look at his face, dude. Look at those eyes. What are those? Jesus Christ. It looks like anyway. he's very high right there. <laughs> it does. I think he right, probably we, was. So We need a couple of these right here. Yeah. Uh, that guy and and the publication he writes for, too. Yeah. Kit Clamberg. Yeah. We've used him frequently on the show for Mint Press News, as well as, like, eight Friend other of the places. Show. Um, Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Um, hopefully we can get him on soon. That would be nice. Um, Meta's policy on Zionism exposed. Cyberwell scrambles after Israel's ties revealed. Have you heard of Cyberwell, Indy? You? Well, I heard of it? I had um, because I'm in that world. But um, yeah, it's it's not good. Um, censorship industrial complex shit. Here we go. On July 10th, it was announced that social media giant Meta would broaden the scope of its censorship and suppression of content related to the Gaza genocide. Under the new policy, Facebook and Instagram posts containing derogatory or threatening reference to, quote, Zionists in cases where the term is used to refer to Jews or Israelis will be prescribed. Unsurprisingly, a welter of Zionist lobby organizations, many of which aggressively lobbied Meta to adopt these changes, cheered the move. Emboldened, the same entities are now calling for all social media platforms to follow suit. Hey, the Times of Israel. Wait, wait, no- wait, wait, wait! Stop, stop! Back up, back up! Go back yeah. one, one slide. Mm-hmm. When is the when is the reference to Zionists in cases when it's not Jews or Israelis? <laughs> I guess yeah. Christian Zionists. Christian Zionists. That's fine. You can you can do that, I guess. You can make threatening references to threat to Christian Zionists. Jews or Israelis only apply. Um, yeah. But no, that it, it. God, there's so many problems with this. Okay, let's let's continue. Okay. The Times of Israel noted that nearly 150 advocacy groups and experts provided input that led to Meta's policy update. This prominently included Tel Aviv's based. Cyberwell, mundanely described by the outlet as a non-profit that has been documenting the swell of online antiseptism and Holocaust denial since Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel. These malign activities have had a devastating impact on what Western audiences see and hear about the Gaza genocide on the social media feeds. The impact of these lobbying efforts isn't clear. Although almost simultaneously, Zay Squirrel was abruptly suspended from Twitter without warning or explanation, sparking widespread outrage. The only due to relentless backlash that the account was reinstated, were recently Cyberworld. Shout submitted. out to the Squirrel. Yep. Formal guidance to Meta on censoring the Palestine solidarity phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which Zionists falsely claim is a clarion call for the genocide of Jews, and I'm sure our on Facebook probably just deleted itself. In January, Cyberwell published an extensive <laughs> report on how it was seeking to censor many prominent Twitter All one accounts. person watching. Hi, Mark. That expressed, yeah, it's probably Tom from from MySpace, bro, watching. That expressed <laughs> doubts about the official narrative October 7th, including the widely disseminated, proven to be false libel that Hamas fighters beheaded dozens of infants. Users in the firing line include popular anonymous say Squirrel, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, we got to talk. You got to come talk to us. Just the talk to talk is fine. Fine. We're not that upset. We're disappointed. The Gray Zone chief Max Blumenthal and famous rapper Low Key of Mint Press News, Cyberwell claimed such legitimate skepticism was comparable to Holocaust denial. Again, we've also talked about That's Low a little scary. censorship on... Yeah, that, that- Spotify. Indie media word honoree is in, intermedia word honoree is pretty much all. Um and true true truth tellers um and targeted. Maybe that's happening here too. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Continue. Well, 
uh, breaking, um, Kit Clarenberg just today announced that after Meta announced it was intensifying censorship of the Gaza genocide, righteous Guantanamo Andy has a number of his reports on the Zionist Holocaust on Facebook. On bogus grounds, Meta is on a crusade to silence any criticism whatsoever of Israel. You're wondering who Guantanamo That's Andy, Andy is. Worthington. Where have you been? That's Andy Worthington. Look, look at the title. Horror Behind Comprehension Gaza Teth Pole Realistically Accessed But Could Be As you know, High As six, 60, 600,000. No, 600,000. Yeah. Numbers. Numbers, Wang. Um, this goes against our community standards on cybersecurity, bro. All he's doing is like sharing actual information from, but you know, whatever. Um, well, they think that the 600,000 and even the 186,000, it could be misinformation, which yeah, is like 6 million in, Jews in, never, you know, you know like, well, no, no, hey, doesn't sound very similar. Inconvenient, but that's inconvenient to their narrative. And I, I it hasn't you been proven say, and it's been estimated. Me. That's no, I was going to say that's antiseptic, sir. Mm, I was gonna. You, you were you were heading towards inconvenient truth right there. You were heading to no. Um, thanks, Kit Clarenberg, for highlighting how Facebook has removed two posts critical of Israel that have posted will change on the ninth, allegedly targeting political attacks on the star star in starism. I've been posting about mm-hmm. Israel's genocide since October seventh. Haven't had any posts removed until now. Funny how that works. Well, that's because of Cyberwell. Yeah, that intervention is part of a broader effort by the firm to force the social network to adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, highly controversial working definition of antisepticism. This definition, which has been condemned by many sources, including academic David Feldman, who helped draft it for falsely conveying criticism of the Zionist entity and and antisepticism is a major inspiration for Cyberwell, so too it seems the sinister Israeli government's psychological warfare blitzkrieg, ironic, concerned with mass consciousness activities in the U.S. and Europe. So, 35 pro-Israel groups have called on social media platforms to copy the meta ban. I don't know if you knew this, you know, about adopting the IHRA and whatnot. So... Mm -hmm. Fun. We urge YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Telegram, Reddit, and other social media platforms to follow YouTube's lead by similarly identifying, fighting both classic and new forms of antisepticism. Um, oh, so on June 24th, journalist Jack Paulson reported that Cyberwell was one component of the insidious effort to shape and spread pro Israeli narratives across the Western world, known as Voices of Israel. In response to the expose, Cyberwell repudiated any affiliation with the long-running Israeli-funded Hezbollah operation receiving government funding from any country. As we shall see, though, Wait, what? there are... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Uh-huh. Reputed any affiliation with the long-running Israeli-funded Hezbollah operation. No, they would never. They repudiated... Um, no! What? 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 They, re- oh, dude, they oh, repudiated so hard. We're so hard. Repudiate. Come, come on, man. Not, as nah, we not, shall see, not us. As we shall see. Though there are unambiguous grounds to doubt. Deny. No. So, it's vital to clarify the political ideology and financial forces guiding Cyberwell's operations. Obviously got to follow the money, no? And malign the interests that its censorship activities serve. The non-profit, quote-unquote, is now a trusted partner of Meta, TikTok, and Twitter and ostensibly assisting these major social networks to combat disinformation and reality. This grants a shadowy private firm with open links to Israel's intelligence apparatus, evident ambitions to take its censorship crusade global, unrestrained power to prevent the reality of Israel's genocide from emerging public. Drunk in yeah, pub- not, not for Not for profit doesn't mean not for money. Yes, It just means they spend all the money they get. Yes. But in response to the exposures of Paulson, Cyberwell, which had hitherto operated with a reasonable degree of transparency, 
went scurrying underground. Many sections of his website uh. were pruned of incriminating information or deleted outright. This included a nah. highly illuminating section on the individual running and advising the outfit. Now, visitors to Cyberwell's website are offered no indication of who or what is behind the initiative. It promises to deliver more data, less hate, or data, less hate, um, by tackling empty More chairs, less schools! More chairs, less schools! What? Oh, well, sorry. Using artificial intelligence. Um, in a comment released uh. to Paulson, <laughs> Cyberwell claimed they were forced to remove the Our Team page for safety reasons due to the pair's reporting generation generating false and misleading information. The statement further alleged, following the publication of your story, our analysts were attacked and identified by name on Twitter. Users shared your attacked. article out, and our employees' names to the wider network, and we became concerned for our staff's safety. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you can pay for security. It's fine. Um, a review of now purge. Just don't get whatever security you can't shoot on slope roof. But don't worry about it. Um, a review of the non purged resumes of Cyberwell's founder and staff points to a somewhat different rationale. Many members of the nonprofit's dynamic team of academics, retired generals, intelligence alumni, and innovative tech professionals. That's just how many ways can you say spooks? But you know, um, have extensive IOF backgrounds in Israeli government ties. U.S. born founder Tal or Cohen Montemayor immigrated to Tel Aviv as a teenager and followed to serve in the IOF as a lone soldier. She then entered the intelligence sphere via Israeli firm Argyle Consulting, which provides private spying services to international companies and other entities. Sounds, sounds other, nice. Argyle's, wait, stop, 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 Argyle's and, nice. Wait, wait, and other entities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fre Fred says that originally Facebook labeled this stream may violate whatever. And he's like, what the hell? Sharing a mm. news video? And sure enough, well, I looked at the title now. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Fred. Thank you. And sorry. We're yeah, sorry. sorry. We're sorry. We're, we're so Just sorry. We're sorry. So, she served under Zahar Gorgel. Un Gor Gor the Zohar. You do not. You do not mess with the Zohar. Don't bring Z Zohar up. Um, a decorated IDF intelligence officer with over a decade of experience in various cyber and technology roles. Together, they struck. Upon He's listening the right now. Of driving enforcement and improvement of community standards that hate speech policies across the digital landscape to fight against online anti-Semitism. So they launched Cyberwell. Encouraged by colleagues and mentors, elsewhere, the organization employs Yonathan Hezroni, a former, a former analyst and analyst team leader in the IOF's military intelligence research department. Sure. Yeah. That means um, that he was one of the computer geeks underground that they barely let out. Well, I mean, you talked about Poindexter last week, so. Um, Dina Porat, chief historian of the scientist entity, funded Yad Vashem, who heavily influenced the IHRA's working definition, is named as a Cyberwell advisor. So, too, is Major it's General. Yad Vashem. Yad, 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 I'm sorry, Yad Vashem? No, it's Yad, Yad, Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem. Ah. Um, so Major General Amos Yadlin, it, 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 that one good? Did I get that one? Y Yadlin, Yadlin. It's pro. It's probably. Yadlin. It's probably Yadlin. Would Yadlin. be my guess. Um, a forty-year high-ranking IDF veteran who once held the IDF spying wing and was previously defense attaché to the U.S. Along them, alongside them, is Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner. A longtime IDF spokesperson. His position raises grave questions about the nonprofit denials of any connection to voices of Israel. So, of course, is Israeli corporate records list Lerner as a shareholder and director of Keshet David as voices of Israeli chair and founder Michalakin Avni. Jesus Christ. Can we, can we, like, a little less names, you know? Like, a first and last. It's my, it's, 
it, it's Micah, <laughs> but sure. Micah, M- Mika, Micah, for Micah. Um, in a December 2018 Times of Israel interview, Keshet David initially called Israel Cyber Shield. It is the research and intelligence arm of Israeli government funded organizations, then known as Concert. It was headed by Yossi Kupfwasser, former Israeli in Ministry of Strategic Affairs Director General and lead IDF Military Intelligence Researcher. He was the lead researcher for the IDF. This, so, this is this is really the, okay. So th- this is saying that all their spying. This is the military doing the uh, computer cyber spying. Yep. And then Big old commercializing it through Cyberwell, through Cyberwell, and but really the Israeli military is going to end up with access to all of the data that Cyberwell yeah. ends up collecting and influencing the narrative of what Cyberwell is going to censor. And that Continue. couldn't be possible at any other tech company, cough, cough. Um, but, uh, so... Israel's cyber shield attracted significant public controversy in May of that year after it was revealed to have compiled and circulated a dirty dossier on prominent BDS activist Linda Sarsour in a bid to discredit her and encourage universities and other organizations not to feature her as a speaker. As Avni acknowledged, we shouldn't, but that's another interview. story. Yes. Um, creating a hostile environment for Palestine, solidarity activists and events were precisely the unit's founding purpose. So, yeah, Linda Sarsour, Linda Sarsour, not, 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 not such a, I don't want to see anybody censored and I certainly yeah. don't want to see people turn on her, but not a, not a big fan of hers either. So, and I can understand, yeah. but they also make hysteria. Like she was on team Bernie. Mm-hmm. Like, really? I, it depends on when that was. We, we all were young and dumb once. Um, but yes. So if a person puts up a post, a public post, on Facebook and says, I'm a big supporter of this or that anti-Israeli organization. Not only that, but I'm organizing a demonstration on my campus tomorrow. If they put that public post out for the whole world to know, that's public info. So there's nothing wrong with being aware of that post, and making sure that Jewish students on the campus are aware of it. Concert funds, cash it, David, and we get all the information. Mm-hmm. We get all, all the information. The information. All your information. We get all the us. information. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Cy- <laughs> Funny you go German there. Um, Cyberwell's deep and coherent, if well concealed, ties to the Voices of Israel, the Israeli government, don't end there. The nonprofit's 2022 annual report with its chief financial officer as Sagi Balasha. Um, Sagi Balasha? The very first CEO of Voices of Israel when the operation was still named Concert. He took up the post after leaving the influential Zionist lobby group, the Israeli American Council, right around the time IAC donated thousands of dollars to Keshet David under its former name, Israel Cybershield. Fast forward to 2021, Cyberwell was founded under the title Global Anti-Semitism Research Center, Global Arc. Almost immediately, the wholly unknown nonprofit received a $30,000 joint donation. I mean, I will take a $30,000 joint donation, but that's just me. Not from Cyberwell. No, but, you know, um, alongside Kesha David from Morona Leadership Foundation, which is run by Gila Milstein, the wife of wealthy Cyberwell board member Adam Milstein. Milstein who confronted IAC in 2007 under the express direction Israel's then consensual and then consul general in Los Angeles, Ehud Sanat. Oh, we we can get the names, man. Like You're struggling, struggling. It's just the names. (laughs) It's always, I I could do a lot of other regions very well, but that particular regions of the world's names, you know, um, so, like, can't we just, like, go, like, Jebediah, or, like... No. You know? No? Definitely not. Um, Definitely so, not. From 2018 onwards, former Israel police officer Aaron Vosker, that's the other thing, we got a ton of German mixed in here, has served as chief executive of Keshet David simultaneously 
He led Argyle Consulting, the private spying firm where Tal Or, Cohen, Montemayor, and Zohar Gorgo. God, these sound like, like, this is just an <laughs> alien's name, dude. Like, if you needed a no, name, it's... an alien, Zohar Gorgo. Zohar Gorgo? It, no, it's it's literally like the name of a supervillain. Like really? a dim a, a dim and founded Cyberwolf. Yeah. So like you, you had you you had Gorgel and Montemayor that had basically founded Cyberwell. Yeah. Cohen Montemayor, right? In a Go podcast ahead. interview in January this year, that while at the company, she provided analysis to Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs, same agency that founded Voices of Israel. Cyberwell of course. committee member Eric Becker is an Argyle alumni. Again, this is all circular. Crap. So, you know, Polson, if, it, if it were if if it were another article, you'd say to me, you know, you could have done without that whole paragraph right there. Probably. <laughs> hey, man, tell, 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 kid, fuck. tell kid, you know, condense a little, make it for us dummies. Um, so as Paulson wrote, in other words, the chief executive of Cyberwell and two of its board members previously worked at the same private intelligence spinoff from Voices of Israel. A director of the spinoff is an advisor to Cyberwell, and the CEO of Voices became the CFO of Cyberwell, as Paulson tells Mint Press. So, these groups are so tightly knit, you can arrive at the same conclusion ten different ways. These efforts are for sure all an evolution of Israel's long-running anti-BDS program, and I'm glad we talked about every all the ten ways. Glad we, we made it through that in the last paragraph. Um, so. To make this mephetic web even murkier and more incestuous, dealing more your words incestuous. Recently, Cyberwell partnered with the like it's Game of Thrones stuff, well the notorious Act.il, which is closely associated with IAC and the Inis Israeli Ministry of Strategic Affairs, the latter lead Zionist entity anti BDS efforts globally. Cyberwell's twenty twenty two report noted that the nonprofit served as the data provider to Act Isle's community for the end of year call to action on the state of online anti So, I mean, they're writing the book on all this. In a bitter twist, it was in 2022 that Act.il ceased operations, having secretly for years corralled Zionist activities to target boycotts, justify Israeli oppression and slaughter, and harass human rights groups and Palestinian solidarity activists online under the bogus agus of organic and spontaneous response, aka bot farm. The platform abruptly shuttered without much in the way of explanation. This may have been triggered by the crusading work of Canadian academic Michael Bukert, who amply exposed Act IL as an Israeli government propaganda can connivance? Connivance? Connivance. Connivance? That makes sense. From day one. I like that's Latin, English, Greek, something like that. Um, yeah, Cyberwell's press. I want to desired... see that report at some point. Yes. I want to see how he debunked that. That's probably, that's pretty friggin' cool. So badly they had to shut the fucking thing down. <laughs> right, that right. was a pretty, uh, wow. Hmm. So Cyberwell's pressing desire to disassociate itself from Israel's security intelligence apparatus is un. Undoubtedly motivated by a fear, the output could go the way of Act.il. If its true nature was exposed and well known, markedly both Argyle and Cyberwell executives and Adam and Gil and Milestein refused to respond to further requests for comments from Paulson on their relationship and shared funding with Kesha David. Yet, Cyberwell's Israeli government origins hide in plain sight. In February, Tel Aviv's Ministry of Strategic Affairs and the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs produced a report, The Hate Factor, Policy Online for Combating Anti-Semitism Online, Online, Online. Little notice at the time among its proposed strategies was the exploitation of artificial intelligence. Who would have thunk they would use that, Indy? They certainly nah. don't mind using it to target missiles. So, Cyberwell's USP to root out and neutralize users on social media platforms posting and sharing content critical of Israel. It is no coincidence that Cyberworld launched months later. Our reporting forensically demonstrates that the IHRA advocacy nonprofit Cyberwell is a spin out of Israel's most controversial anti BDS intelligence collection effort. Kesha David, which further used Argyle Consulting Group as its public face, also tells Mint Press News. 
The corporate shell right. game continues, with Keshet being the intel collection arm of the primary propaganda effort of the Israeli government, Voices of Israel, that Cyberwell scrubbed its intelligence ties from its website after we exposed how the nonprofit was born out of this network speaks volume. That's Ooh. what I said. Yep. So it is vitally incumbent for Palestine solidarity activists to mount pressure on Cyberwell and demand answers for the questions that its executives now stonewall. They, and of course the spectral actors lurking behind them, clearly have grand plans. On July 3rd, Cyberwell circulated a dubious study on alleged anti-Semitism posting related to the month's UK general election. Content critical of now Prime Minister Keir Starmer's avowed Zionism was specifically cited an accompanying press release declared, as elections are being held this year in a number of countries, including the UK, France, and the US, Cyberwell anticipates that antiseptic conspiracies, accusations, and hateful rhetoric will continue to rise online and in the real world. Unfortunately, one of the few things that opposing parties and sides have agreed on throughout history is the use of antiseptic tropes to blame the other for perceived failures and harms. The fucking projection. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Ugh. So, For we real. can expect similar studies to circulate in the wake of every election and political incident in the years to come. In this Cyberwell's Israeli intelligence run, operations are brought to a rapid and wholly deserved halt. <sighs> Why? <laughs> That's a big sigh. I, 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 bro. Like, what are, what are we doing? You know? Well, well. We're fucked. That, that would be, that would be the case. Um, bad news, bad things are happening. Well, talking about these things is why Facebook barely lets us keep any content up. And also why we're demonetized on YouTube. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network. Scan the QR code on your screen or go to the link in the description. Leave us donation very nice um you know otherwise like, nice. subscribe, do all the engagement things you already know to do every youtuber asks you to do it you know where the buttons are they light up if i say them like if i say like subscribe comment share it's, it's supposed to supposed to come up right allegedly you know leave us a little comment let us know what you think otherwise thanks for watching